was actually custom made for me, which is kind of silly in a way because, you know, I'm not exactly Clapton up here. I don't really deserve a <laughs> signature model <laughs> of anything. But, um, but uh, there was this woman, Luthie, who was working in Oregon, and she was trying to get her hands into, or her guitar into the hands of, um, <laughs> that would be a terrible slip, her guitars into the hands of women singer songwriter types. <laughs> But, uh, so she came to me and, and showed me one of her guitars, and I thought, wow, you know, that's really beautiful. And she's like, I could make you one. And I'm like, I'll oh, be serious. And she says, no, for reals. <laughs> I said, well, okay, then I want a nice skinny one like Joan Baez plays, a little parlor guitar. But I wanted to have a big, giant, fat neck like my dad's old Yamaha. Because <laughs> that's what I learned on. And so, uh, and so she made it. And it's a fabulous guitar. You can hear it. It just sounds like a million bucks. Save it for finger picking because it's got such great tones to it. So, so this first song I'm going to play on this, um, there's, it's called Hard to Make It, and um, we have a new album that's coming out, a new Dave and Tracy album. You know, Dave Carter is my uh, is my partner who's been who's been gone for quite some time now. He passed away in 2002, and kind of what I do for those who don't know is I carry the torch and I sing his songs. And I've been doing this for longer than I actually knew him, <laughs> I realized. Uh, but it's, it's worthwhile work. It's, it's, uh, it's a mission that I'm thankful to have. And anyway, um, I was going through the archives. It was a, a couple of summers ago, and I live in western Massachusetts, and the basement walls began to grow fur on them, and I, I wasn't, it was the middle of summer, and I thought, well, why is that happening? We have a dehumidifier running, but it was making noise and not taking any moisture out of the air. <laughs> and so, uh, and so my partner at the time, Jim Henry, he and I both had a bunch of audio tapes stored in, in the basement, and we were very worried that they had grown mold and were ruined. And so he runs upstairs with his box of tapes, and and the tape was VHS tape, actually. There was a brief window of time when you could, uh, when special machines were made called ADATs, and you could use regular VHS tape to record up to eight tracks on, on these machines. And this was great for musicians because VHS tape, you could find it anywhere and it was cheap, you know. It's like, yay, <laughs> a break in our favor. Um, but it's tape and tape does not last forever, as we know. And so, so Jim Henry brings his box of tapes upstairs and he pops one into the old ADAT machine and he's got that wired to a hard drive. You know, we're gonna transfer everything to a hard drive and it all goes through this big mixing board and has to be done in real time. So he pops that tape in and he pushes play and the sound comes out. It's like <laughs> which is not really what he had recorded. And it turned out that his tape was completely, there was like a strip of mold that had grown along the entire length of the tape. And so he had to go with this little Q-tip and alcohol and clean it all off and then transfer it. So you can imagine I knowing that I had some 30 tapes in the basement. When I heard that <laughs> sound go by, I just thought, oh my god, I've done it. I've ruined all the Dave and Tracy tapes. I've carried them from location to location over the 10 years that I've moved, and, and now here, at the light, you know, they're, they're just gone. 